This lesson is going to talk about the basic characteristics of quadratics. In particular, we're going to take a look at the graph of y equals x squared. We're going to talk about what an optimal value is, what the vertex is, how do we find the axis of symmetry, how many x-intercepts can a parabola have, first and second differences, the sort of general information stuff that you need the um, kind of the lingo of to deal with quadratics. So first of all, the standard form of a quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we're going to look at first of all is just the most basic parabola that you can have, and that is the equation y equals x squared. In grade 12, you'll do a lot of talk about uh, parent functions. So y equals x squared is the parent function for a quadratic. In other words, it's the, the smallest form of a quadratic that you can have. You see we're missing all the a and we're missing all this bx plus c. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to graph this. Now the other thing you should know that is a quadratic with a degree of 2. <clears throat> so if a function has a degree of 2 it's a quadratic. Okay, So you did linear functions in grade 9 so you did things like y equals mx plus b. So the x had a, an exponent of 1, so that meant it was linear. So degree 2 means it's quadratic. Degree 3, it's going to be cubic. Degree 4, it's going to be quartic, and so on. There's all sorts of different functions that you can graph. So let's take a look at the graph of y equals x squared. Just really basic understanding of how we would go about graphing it. Because this is squared, it's very important that you do some negative and positive values for your x. When you're doing linear equations, all you needed was any two points and you could have made a line. But because a quadratic is in the shape of a parabola, that's that U-shaped graph, then we need to have some points on, on both sides of what is called the vertex. So let's just start with the most basic one here, and we're going to plug in some values between minus 3 and positive 3. <clears throat> and of course, if we square 3, we get 9, square 2, square 1, square 0, square 1, square 2, square 3. So you can see when we do the squaring that, of course, all our values are going to be positive. You can't square a negative and get a negative value. So this, again, is the most basic parabola. It has 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. And because, you see, we had to go to the negative side as well to get the shape of this. Because if you had graphed only this part of the parabola, you wouldn't think it was a para parabolic shape at all. But because you have two sides here, you're going to have a graph that looks like this. Okay, so a couple of things when you're graphing a parabola or a quadratic that graphs as a parabola is that you don't want to make a pointy graph like this. Okay, that is not a parabola. That actually is another kind of function. It's called an absolute value function. So it's a curved, it has a curved bottom on it and it goes up really nicely like this. You should put arrows on the end to indicate that the graph continues because we are only using the points from minus three to positive three. Now there are a number of things that I can tell you about this graph by looking at it. First of all, it is concave up. So you're going to see these terms concave up and concave down. So it's important that you understand what this means. So concave up rhymes with pass the cup. And if you look at this graph, I could make a cup out of it. Look at this. It'll hold water, right? Like this. There we go. A nice tea mug. Hmm, I like a cup of tea. So concave up past the cup. Now you can also have a parabola that goes down. So let's just make a little sketch of one over here. So let's, we'll put it on a coordinate plane. And here's a problem that is concave down. 
and we have a rhyme for that one as well concave down and we say why the frown and I'll show you you can make a little face out of this it's okay so here see why the frown concave up past the cup concave down why the frown with this function as well you should identify a very important point that you're going to be looking for in a lot of word problems and that is this point right here this is called the vertex. When the graph is concave up, it happens to be the lowest point on the graph. The vertex, when it's concave down, ends up being the nose of the frowny man. No, it means it's the highest point. So this is going to be a maximum value. A maximum value. And this vertex here, these are, this is still a vertex. Vertex just means this point here where the graph starts changing direction. So this is going to be a minimum value. Okay. Now, often it's also described as an optimal value as well. So in a lot of word problems, you might have something that gets thrown up into the air and they say, what is the optimal value? It could be the highest point on your function. So let's say, how, how high did the ball go when I threw it in the air? Or how low did something go here? So the optimal value is the highest, or that should have been an O, or, or the lowest value for the function. It is also the Y coordinate of the vertex. So here I have a parabola that is concave down why the frown? You can see a little face there. And it has this coordinate 3, 4. So the highest value for this function is right here, right? That's as high as it goes. And that is the y coordinate. So I would say this function has a maximum, a maximum of 4. And it happens at a certain point, and that is when x equals 3. So you see when I have x is 3, I have the maximum height of 4. This is also the vertex. The vertex is 3, 4. So it depends on what you're being asked. So a maximum value of 4 when x is 3, or you could say it has a vertex of 3, 4. This function on this side here now has, it has a minimum value minimum, I'm just going to use short form, the only minimum value of minus 1 when x equals minus 2. So this is my, that's my vertex as well. It should be right in the middle. Something else about parabolas when you look at them is they are perfectly symmetrical and they happen to be symmetrical about a line that is called the axis of symmetry. That's a really important thing also that you're going to be finding from time to time. Let me see if I can find different color. That's right. The axis, not of evil here, but the axis of symmetry. So you know what symmetry is. You know what symmetrical means. Symmetrical means it's the same, so same on both sides. So if we go up to this first function, the axis of symmetry is right down the middle here. It goes right through the vertex, right through the vertex. And it has an equation of a line. So what is the equation of this line that goes straight up like this? That would be x equals 0. Some people might say y equals 0, but no, it's x equals 0 because this point is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. So I say 0 all the time. All the x's are 0. This function down here, the first pink one I did, this one has an axis of symmetry, goes right through the vertex again, and the equation of that line is going to be x equals 3. And finally, my other function over here that I drew, it goes through x equals minus 2. So x equals minus 2 is the axis of symmetry for this graph. Now you may be looking at this and saying, oh, well, that's easy to find because the axis of symmetry 
is always the x-coordinate of your vertex. So this vertex is 0, 0, x equals 0. So we're, we're getting the axis of symmetry from the x-coordinate of the vertex right here. See, right there. And we're getting the height of the function for the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so axis of symmetry. It's important that you know that this is an equation. So don't say the axis of symmetry is 3. That's not, that's not proper mathematical language. It's an equation of a line. So something like, example, x equals 0, x equals 3, x equals minus 2 from those graphs that I've done for you here. Okay, so that's pretty basic, but you need to understand concave up, concave, concave up, concave down, a vertex, a minimum or a maximum or optimal values, and you should be able to graph y equals x squared because that, that's a pretty basic graph. Okay, now sometimes the position of the parabola here, the position of the parabola is going to be um, determining the number of x-intercepts. So again, what is an x-intercept? An x-intercept is where you cross the x-axis. So if I have a parabola that's sitting up here and it's concave up, you can tell that this function is never going to cross the x-axis. So this one has no x-intercepts. And not too long into um, quadratics, we're going to find out how to determine whether it has any intercepts or not. You can have three things, and I bet you've already figured out what they could be. The second one I'm going to show you is if I have a prowl that comes up and it just kisses that x-axis just like that, and it's only touching in one, one point, right here, right at the vertex, one x-intercept. Okay, so one x-intercept. And finally, the last one, I'm sure you can figure out that's going to be this really nice, happy one, a concave up parabola, or could have been a concave down one. I could put one right here like that. Doesn't mean concave up has two. Concave down can have two as well. And also I could have made one x-intercept by just coming down and touching the axis. I could have put this down here. You get the picture. Okay, so this has two x-intercepts two x-intercepts one here one here or like that okay we'll get into more of that a little later on as well first and second differences um, your teacher is going to ask you how did you know to check a function to tell you whether or not it is quadratic or linear and you probably will have some sort of table of values now, if we just use the equation of the line y equals x, let's say we'll say minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And when x is minus 2, then y is minus 2. Lines are easy. And if you do the first differences, the first differences, so if I do um, 2 minus 1, I get 1. 1 minus 0, I get 1. 0 minus minus 1, I get 1. Minus 1 minus minus 2, and I get 1. And I know you did this in grade 9, and it's the same thing here, and it tells you that when the first differences are the same, when first differences, so I only had to take the differences once to get them all to be the same. See, these numbers are all 1. When first differences are the same, It is a linear function, a linear function or linear relation, I would say, functions here. Now, if we do y equals x squared, and I plug in minus 3 and 9, minus 2 and 4, minus 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3, uh, sorry, 4, 3 and 9, and if I do the first differences, 9 minus 4 is 5, 4 minus 1 is 3, 
1 take away 0 is 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And 4 minus 9 is minus 5. So when I look at the first differences, they're all different. So it's not linear. Now I do it again. 5 minus 3 is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. 1 minus a minus 1 is 2. Minus 1 minus minus 3 is plus 2. And minus 3 minus minus 5 is also 2. So now when we have the second differences, when the second differences are the same, then it is quadratic. Not the same. It is quadratic. And also, something else you can tell, if second differences, I'll just put second diff, are positive, positive, then function is concave up. I'm going to write C, C, up, concave up. If the second differences are negative, negative, then concave down. Why the frown, right? Like this. Boop, boop. Concave up, like that. Okay. So one more little thing we need to talk about in today's lesson. Determining the axis of symmetry. If you have the coordinates for two points on a parabola that are at the same height, that means their y coordinates are the same, then the axis of symmetry will be right in the middle or at the midpoint between the x coordinates. Okay, so I give you an example here. If I have minus 12 and 4, that's this point right here, and I have 16 and 4 right here, I can tell you where the axis of symmetry is because remember when we looked at, let me just grab that graph here for a second, when we looked at this function, when we sketched it, this point from here to here and this one from here to here, these are equal distance, right? If I took this piece of paper and I folded it right down the axis of symmetry and I held it up to the light, which you can't see here, but all the points on the function, if I went right across to here, it's going to be the same distance to the other side. Okay, so that's important when we're looking here. Because now, if I said I know these two points, and I'm going from minus 12 to 16, how do you find the midpoint? Remember doing that in grade, grade 10, you did this, right? So midpoint, I'll just put mid is going to be minus 12 plus 16 divided by 2. So you add them up, divide by 2, so it gives me 2. So that means when x is 2, how did I do this? 2, 4, no, I didn't, I did 4, 8, 12, 16. So right in 2, 2 would be right about here. So this is x equals 2. Now what I don't know just having these two points. I don't know where the vertex is. The vertex itself could have been up here and it could have been concave down or could have been down here somewhere and it could be concave up, right? So that's something we're going to look at a little later as well. This also works, and this is important because that's why we did all the factoring. This also works if you know the x-intercepts. So if I gave you that the x-intercepts are 6, 0 and 4, minus 4 and 0, so here and here. And again, I have the same height, right? It just happens that the x-intercepts always have coordinates of 0 for the y-coordinate, right? This is 6, 0, and this is minus 4 and 0. So midpoint between those, so I would say the midpoint is minus 4 plus 6 divided by 2. That's going to give me 1. So I did these by 2. So that means my axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals 1. Don't forget, the axis of symmetry is the equation of a line. Okay, so that's your lesson for an introduction to quadratics. Generally, the terminology we've talked about, some of the basic characteristics, 
um, the symmetry, the optimal values, maximum min values, and how to find an axis of symmetry, and also first and second differences, and how many x-intercepts it can have. That's it for today. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends. Get all your grade 10 friends here so that we can uh, help them out. Bye for now.